Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and today we're back with another random episode challenge. If you haven't seen any of the previous episodes and need further explanation, you can check them out, they'll be linked in the description. Basically, we let a random number generator pick an episode of the Pokemon anime and make a team from the first six Pokemon to appear in the chosen episode. With our team, we take on the hardest trainer in a given game with a set battle style and no items allowed, held, or otherwise. I asked on the last video and virtually everyone agreed that going forward I should exclude the ever-present Pokemon, ones like Pikachu, Togepi, Meowth, and Piplup. Instead, we're going to go for more Pokemon specific to the episode we're using. The number generated for today's video was 228, which corresponds with the 19th episode of the Master Quest season, Extreme Pokemon. Known in Japan as Run Quickly Along the Pokemon Ride, the episode is centered around a Pokemon pulled skateboard race. So, let's get into it. On their way to Mahogany Town, Ash, Misty, and Brock come across a town called Exeter? My trusted map says that's Exeter! Okay. Whatever you say, Brock. They cross paths with Gary, who's riding a skateboard pulled by his Arcanine. With Pikachu and Togepi off the table, the Fire Type will be our first Pokemon for this video. Ash challenges him to a battle, but Gary says he can't risk Arcanine before the big race. Ash is confused at first, and then once he sees people training, he's upset, feeling that the race is dangerous for the Pokemon and shouldn't be happening. We then get a difficult shot as it pans over a series of hills and we have a few unidentifiable Pokemon. There's an all-orange dog-type thing that I think is just nothing. Then we have a barely noticeable Vileplume who will be our second team member. Then, as that's Gary riding up the path, the Arcanine on the left is with a different trainer, so that's three. The last two Pokemon in the shot are also just kind of blobs, there's no real way to figure out who they are. As it cuts to a different shot of Gary cresting a hill though, we have a clear picture of our fourth Pokemon. Another trainee racer rides past with his Grand Bull, and immediately after we see another race participant practicing with his Scyther. That's number five, and then we have a little break before anything else too serious happens. In a restaurant in town, Ash meets Mr. Shelby, the owner of a local daycare who tells him all about the extreme Pokemon race. They ride to Mr. Shelby's home on a Tauros-drawn car, giving us our final team member, and when they arrive, Ash ultimately decides to enter the race. No crisis of conscience, nobody even told him it was safe for the Pokemon. He just stopped caring. Mr. Shelby gives him an old skateboard to practice with, and Ash just rides it straight into a rock. Right away. Good work. Gary's Arcanine saves him from serious injury, though. What a good boy. Bang! Ash decides the Bayleaf will be his Pokemon partner for the race, and gets to training. Back at the house, Mrs. Shelby sets out some food for all the hungry Pokemon. Mmm, mm, tasty. Soft center. Mmm, 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 mmm. This Pokemon food is really great. This is cat food, Charlie. While Ash is practicing, Mr. Shelby tells him that in the second half of the race, he'll have to carry a dummy egg from the daycare to the finish line and then provides him with one to practice with. Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? The next morning, it's time for the extreme Pokemon race, and some of the Pokemon entered seem a bit weird. There's no set path for the race, they just have to get to the daycare, pick up their dummy egg, and get to the finish. The start of the race is absolutely amazing. Scyther just takes off into the air and flies his trainer into a bunch of other bodies, and it's hilarious. It reminds me of the chase scene with Miles and Peter from Into the Spider-Verse, and it's just the best. Like, they were training yesterday and it seemed fine, but I guess Go isn't a very specific instruction. Scyther has base 105 speed and can fly, so if you just say go, it's gonna go. Ash and Gary escape the carnage and get out to the front of the pack. They're neck and neck when Team Rocket show up in the skies above and capture Arcanine from right under Gary's nose. Instead of abandoning Gary in his time of need, Ash takes a page out of Scyther's book and gets Bayleaf to just fling him into the air. Somehow he manages to pop the hot air balloon with a skateboard and it crash lands at the daycare. That is incredibly convenient. With Arcanine free from the net, Team Rocket settles for stealing baskets of Pokemon eggs from the daycare instead. Ash tries to stop them, but Jesse's Arbok gets the better of Bayleaf initially, before Gary catches up and instructs Arcanine to use Takedown. Team Rocket attempts to run away, but Bayleaf retrieves the baskets with her vines, and then Arcanine blows them away with Flame Wheel. Somehow, in all of this mess, Ash and Gary still haven't been overtaken. Uh oh we better hurry! Yeah, they're starting to catch up with us! Honestly, this whole situation sort of confuses the race. Ash rode most of the way on a crash landing hot air balloon, and Gary just ran, so is that okay? As long as you cross the start line and the finish line on a skateboard, you're good? 
Fair enough. Anyway, they get their dummy eggs from Mr. Shelby and get back to racing. It's a close contest which Gary just about edges ahead in, but Ash takes a risky shortcut to get back into contention. At the finish, Bayleaf whips herself and leaps across the line, just beating Arcanine to win the race for Ash. Bayleaf gets a medal and Ash gets a trophy for his efforts, and it's a lovely moment altogether. By this point, Gary was more friend than foe, and he's more than happy to see his rival win. On top of his earlier prizes, Mr. Shelby gives Ash an egg that would eventually hatch into Fanpy. And that's the episode. Let's have a look at the team we'll be using. With 6 fully evolved Pokemon and an average base stat total of 505, we actually have a superior team for once. We'll be taking on Red and with his team averaging just 492, he's actually at a disadvantage. So, because I wanted a real challenge, I decided that we had to be 20 levels under his team to make things fair. So, seeing as he's got 1 level 81, 3 level 77s, a level 75 and a level 73, we'll be using 1 level 61, 3 57s, a 55 and a 53. That should make this seriously difficult, but it's also going to save me a bunch of time on grinding, so it's a win-win. Okay, time to actually catch this team. We start off at the National Park by entering the Bug Catcher Contest, because that's the only place you can pick up a Scyther. It doesn't take long at all before coming across the Bug Flying type, and to my surprise, we actually managed to catch her with just one Park Ball. That was a major stroke of luck, because I don't think there's much Shadow Facts could have done without knocking her out. We finish up early, and the Scyther we caught actually earns us the win. We pick up a Sunstone for our victory, and then head to Ilex Forest. Thanks to the day-night cycle in Crystal and the time I started, Oddish was the only other team member available to catch when I started playing. We'd already grinded a bit with Scyther, and after a false swipe, catching Oddish is no problem at all. As we can't catch any other team members right now, we may as well just grind. I wasn't recording, but at level 21 our Oddish evolved into a Gloom, so our next task is to get a Leaf Stone. We don't have to wait too long before we get a call from Picnic or Gina, who gifts us just that, meaning Vileplume is now available to us. We don't want to evolve Gloom just yet though. Now that it's morning, we can go about catching the other four team members. On Route 34, we use Gloom to put a Snubble to sleep and then catch it. That's half of our team down. Just west of Violet City, we add two more team members in the shape of two Growliths. Moving on, we find our final target on Route 37, and it took a while and I've cut most of it out, but in the end, we catch ourselves a Tauros. That's all six of the Pokemon we needed to catch, now we just need to do some grinding and evolving. While we're training, Schoolboy Allen gives us a call and tells us to come pick up a Firestone that he found. After we grab that, I missed another evolution while grinding because I wasn't recording, but at level 23, we have another fully evolved team member in Granville. Once Gloom reaches level 44, she learns Petal Dance, so it's time to use one of the Leaf Stones we were given. That causes her to evolve into Vile Plume, and now we're just two evolutions away from being done. While training up Growlithe, we run into Entei, which is always a nice surprise. It flees after one takedown, so we continue grinding. Once Growlithe reaches level 50, it's the perfect time to use our Firestone. If you evolve Growlithe at level 50, you get Flamethrower as a Growlithe and Extreme Speed as an Arcanine. After a while, we pick up a second Firestone and complete our final evolution, leaving us to just level up a few more times before taking on Red. Let's skip ahead to that. For the battle with Red, our team looks like this. Granbull is at level 57 with Return, Roar, Charm, and Bite. Tauros is also at 57 with Return, Scary Face, Rest, and Thrash. Scyther is our third level 57 and her moveset consists of Wing Attack, Sword Stance, Double Team, and Slash. At 55 we have Vile Plume with Petal Dance, Toxic, Flash, and Moonlight. Finally, our two Arcanine are 53 and 61 and have the same four moves, Flamethrower, Agility, Bite, and Extreme Speed. I'm starting to think being 20 levels underleveled may be a bit too much. Well, let's give it a go. Red leads off, as always, with his trusty level 81 Pikachu, and Gramble comes in on our side. There's a pretty major level disparity here, and Pikachu's base speed stat is already twice as high, so he obviously hits first. Thunder cuts away more than half of Gramble's health, but her base attack stat is four times Pikachu's base defense. The stab return that she hits back with is powerful enough to knock out Pikachu in one and give us the first win of the match. Then Red sends out Espeon, and as the battle style is on set, we don't get a chance to change our Pokemon, as it should be. We don't get a chance to land a hit either. Espeon wipes out Granbull with Psychic and evens up the match. We go with our level 61 Arcanine next, and we get a bit lucky as Espeon goes for Reflect after we pick Flamethrower and the Fire-type move causes a burn. Espeon follows up with Psychic, and it takes Arcanine below half health, but the damage from the burn, combined with the second Flamethrower, 
finish off the Psychic type to score us a second knockout. Blastoise comes in next for red and not wanting to risk getting hit on a switch in, we leave Arcanine in. We know Extreme Speed will connect first, but unfortunately Reflect weakens it enough that it doesn't do too much. A Surf from Blastoise destroys Arcanine number one and we're forced to switch into Vileplume. Red helps us out with a move selection again as he orders Blastoise to use Rain Dance. That lets us get off a free pedal dance which takes him below half health. Blizzard then hits hard and almost knocks out Vileplume, but she just manages to live through it and get off a second hit of Petal Dance. The move finishes off Red's third Pokemon, and again, we have a narrow lead in the battle. Snorlax comes out fourth for Red, and we're locked into Petal Dance. Vileplume outspeeds and gets one hit off, but it doesn't do too much damage. A single Body Slam crushes Vileplume, and again, it's all square. We bring in Arcanine, but I realized too late that Rain Dance was still in action. Instead of going for a reduced power flamethrower, we opt for extreme speed now that Reflect is done. It doesn't do too much damage, but the full weight of Snorlax's body slam certainly does. That takes Arcanine below half health and paralyzes her. That makes our decision for us as far as our next move goes. We'll never outspeed him while paralyzed, so instead we just hit a second extreme speed and accept our fate. Another body slam does its job and knocks out Arcanine number two. We're now down to a two on three, and Tauros is up next. The Wild Bull Pokemon hits Snorlax with Return, and it cuts away about half of his remaining HP. The Retaliation does the same, chipping away around 50% of Tauros' health. A second Return is just enough to finish off Snorlax though, and take it down to a 2 on 2. Venusaur is Red's penultimate Pokemon, and Tauros outspeeds him to hit Return. It does a bit of damage, but the real help comes from Venusaur using Solar Beam. It takes a turn to charge up, meaning we have a free turn to get a hit in. It leaves him with around a quarter of his health remaining before his Solar Beam is unleashed and blows away Tauros. That leaves us with just one. Scyther comes in and is fast enough to get off a wing attack before Venusaur can react. That's good enough to take Red down to his final Pokemon. Unfortunately, that final Pokemon is Charizard. Even though we're 20 levels below, our speed is high enough that I'm pretty sure we can outspeed him. That leaves our only real option as Double Team. If Charizard makes contact, we're dead, we cannot afford to get hit. The first flamethrower misses its mark, and for now, we're safe. I don't think we can come close to knocking out Charizard in one right now, so our next move has to be Sword Stance. Flamethrower misses again, and now it's time to attack. I don't think one hit will be enough, but we've got to try. Wing Attack finds its mark, and slowly but surely, Charizard's health goes through green, down into orange, then red, and then nothing. A critical hit. Our level 57 Scyther has taken down Red's level 77 Charizard, all by herself. That might be one of the most clutch performances from any Pokemon ever. I definitely did not expect to win this one. We needed a bit of luck in the end, but a heroic showing got us over the line. That's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.